Welcome everyone to Gamer Mel. Today I've got a bunch of stories to cover, but I'm still working on a couple Ryzen 7000 videos that will be coming out shortly, so I thought I'd do a talking head video. Either way, the stories are pretty wild. Starting with Intel's ART failing again, RTX 4090 gets insane clocks, new special edition 4090, Intel's 13th gen pricing is wild, and RX 7000 GPUs get this. Okay. It's news time and first up for today, it looks like Intel has yet again failed to deliver ARC. As you can see down here, if you remember not long ago, Intel stated that their limited edition graphics cards were coming summer 2022. Well, it is technically just a few days after summer and they still haven't delivered. This of course is not the first time this has happened, they were supposed to come like two years ago then I believe it was in Q1, then they said Q2, and they've sort of kind of stuck to what they said a little bit by doing weird stuff like releasing it in certain parts of the world, releasing the lowest end GPU, things like that. Just clear signs that they're trying to stick with what they say, but clearly aren't really able to. Still, it does look pretty obvious that they have yet again missed a hard deadline. Now, with that said, there is a little bit of kind of good news here. As you can see, um, apparently information based on new embargo uh, guidelines that were provided to reviewers, the ARC A770 embargo gets lifted. Well, the unboxing embargo gets lifted in just a few days at 9.30, but the review embargo gets lifted at 10.5. As, as far as an actual release date, we still don't know, and obviously they could push this even further, but as of now, that's at least what we're looking at. Either way, it really does not look good for Intel. And next up for today, we have some new information on NVIDIA's upcoming 4090. Besides the fact that you have to do stuff like sell your arm to afford it, it is at least looking pretty impressive. As you can see right here, um, basically what happened, NVIDIA themselves demoed some games, specifically Cyberpunk 2077, and it did show some pretty impressive results. As you can see down here, the GPU actually was getting around 2820 megahertz. And the reason that's impressive is because the actual boost clock, the rated boost clock, according to NVIDIA, is 2.52 gigahertz. So this is clearly quite a bit higher than that. Pretty impressive. Then whenever we go down here, we can see one other thing that happened, and this isn't all that impressive when you look at the FPS, but hold on one second. We can see the 4090 GPU with DLSS3 disabled actually consumed 461 watts. Not too surprising. These are definitely power hog GPUs. But what's interesting is that when they enabled DLSS3, the GPU actually saw a drop to 348 watts. So we're talking over 100 watts less power. Not only that, but with DLSS 3.0, it also saw an increase of performance of around 3.8 times at least performance per watt. We can see the actual performance numbers down here. It originally got 60 FPS until they enabled DLSS 3.0 and it got a whopping 170. So a massive jump, and of course, you might be wondering 60 FPS, because when we look, it's 1440p, but keep in mind that this is ultra ray tracing, max settings, it may even be their new like ultra uh, RT ray tracing stuff. So 60 isn't terrible, but at the same time, with the fact that it saw such a massive boost with DLSS 3.0, that's pretty impressive, though I am a bit worried because with uh, DLSS 3.0 being so much higher, it makes me think that native performance isn't going to be that big of a jump as we originally thought. Of course, we'll obviously have to wait and test these out ourselves before giving any kind of definitive answer, but that is at least a little bit worrying, yet obviously the clocks with the fact that I do believe that these were actually stock and yet they're getting up to a whopping 2820 megahertz, very impressive there. Moving on, NVIDIA looks to have teamed up with Cyberpunk 2077 to do a giveaway where they're basically giving away three RTX 4090s with a custom backplate. As you can see here, it does look pretty cool, although at the same time, it is just 
a custom backplate. It isn't like a completely redesigned GPU or anything like that. So not a huge deal, though, of course, given how expensive RTX 4090s are anyway. If you're able to get one of these, more power to you to sign up. They basically have three different dates where they kind of give you a hint. And I think you're basically supposed to take a screenshot of a select area in the game for a chance to win. But if you're interested in that, you will find that on Cyberpunk 2077's Twitter page. And while sticking to NVIDIA, it looks like someone actually got a chance to get their hands on an RTX 4090. You can see right here that it was actually purchased at a street vendor in Hong Kong, and this is a GeForce RTX 4090. There's the card right here. We can see the back, then the back of the shroud. Like I said, this is definitely a 4090. It does look pretty decent. Not a bad card at all. We can see, um, oh, this is the adapter with four 8 pins to one 16 pin. So, you know, this is the PCI Express 5.0 adapter. These cards are major power hogs, so you're definitely going to need a lot of juice going to it. Unfortunately, this user wasn't able to actually test out the card because they don't have drivers. With that said, like Video Cards mentions, because someone was able to get it this early on, board partners likely do have a large stock of cards waiting for customers. Of course, given the price of these, I don't know how many people are going to be buying them. And speaking of prices, Intel looks to be increasing the prices for their upcoming 13th gen CPUs at least if these listings on Amazon UK ends up being correct. Now, I will go ahead and say that there's at least a chance that these are just placeholder pricing, but as Tech Power Up states, there have been some rumors circulating about Intel looking to increase prices for their next-gen CPUs. So there's at least a chance this ends up being correct. And as you can see, it's not good. For example, the 13,900KF comes in at 750 pounds compared to the 12,900KF of 679 pounds. So a really big difference there. With that said, there is at least a chance that it has something to do with VAT, which is those value added taxes in Europe. So it may not affect US residents as much, but it definitely would have a big impact in Europe. Moving on, we have the 13,700K, which is going for 547 pounds versus the 12,700K at 409. So we're talking nearly 150 pounds more. Moving on, we have the KF model for 516 pounds versus 396 pounds, then the 13,600KF at 349 pounds versus 272. Basically, while Intel's next-gen CPUs have been looking really impressive in terms of performance thanks to those added cores, though there is of course quite a bit higher power draw from what we're seeing, but still overall impressive, if this ends up being the case, it just may not be worth it. Time, as always, will tell. And lastly for today, it looks like AMD's next-gen GPUs are looking even more powerful than the leaks have suggested. As you can see right here, this is a new story from 4Onyx. And basically, an AMD engineer added a code commit to Linux that gives us a really interesting detail. Effectively, it's a 50% increase in the physical vector general purpose registers, or effectively the vector registers got a 50% increase. And as Foronic states, this is a really big deal. Now, it doesn't tell us exactly how much performance we can expect or anything like that. This is more of an architectural optimization, but it really is a big jump from RDNA 2. Now, I will say that Red Gaming Tech is hearing that you're not really going to see this in the lower end GPUs like your mobile GPUs. Those aren't getting an increase in VGPRs. It's mostly going to be the higher end desktop GPUs, but this is still a big deal. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for NVIDIA's next gen or are you wanting to hold out for RDNA 3? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.